Greetings, I am Anthony L. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association practice the teachings as taught by the 13th century Japanese sage Nichiren Shonen. The word Nichiren means sun lotus and Shonen means priest. Now, the way that Nichiren Shonen teach Buddhism is he teaches that the highest teachings of the Buddha Shakyamuni is that of the Lotus Sutra. And the way that we teach and practice Buddhism is we follow the teachings of Nichiren based on writings or letters that he wrote to the disciples called the Ghost Show. Now, today we have an exciting Buddhist lecture for you. Now, our lecture today is called Proud Black Buddhists and LGBT or lesbian, gay, transgender, and bisexual. For years, I wanted to do a lecture on this subject. It is one thing to talk about love, equality, freedom, and justice, and it's another thing to practice it. In my personal life, I was not looking to become some great Buddhist leader. The Nichiren sets, the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, Nichiren Shu, extricated all black history, culture, and language from their Buddhist teachings. And in fact, I was looking to join Nichiren Shu, and what what happened was I wrote the Nichiren Shu le uh, members, leaders a letter, and I asked them about their policy regarding black people. And they responded back to me and said that I was no longer welcome at Nichiren shoe meetings. So, on in January of 2014, we came up with the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We are a Buddhist world association that practice and teach Buddhism that's inclusive of our black history, our black culture, and our language. It is important that black lives do matter and our black history and our culture and our language and being inclusive is all a part of equality and that is the true teachings of Buddhism. Now, in the Gold Show, the Gift of Rights reads, quote, the true had lies in the fires of this world. The Golden Light Sutra states, to have a profound knowledge of this world is itself Buddhism. The Nirvana Sutra states, quote, all non-Buddhist scriptures and writings in society are themselves Buddhist teachings, not non-Buddhist teachings. And it goes on further. When the great teacher Milo compared these passages with the one from the sixth volume of the Lotus Sutra that reads, quote, no world affairs of life or work are ever contrary to the true reality. He revealed their meanings and pointed out that although the first two sutras are profound, since their meaning is still shallow and fails to approach the Lotus Sutra, they relate to secular matters in terms of Buddhism, whereas the Lotus Sutra explains that in the end, secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. See, the topic of policy of the LGBT or lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender should be made clear in relationship to the proud black Buddhist World Association. There is no question in regards to our policy in relationship to the LGB community. Not only do we have a policy, this lecture elaborates our relationship and understanding of the LGBT community. Now, right now, there's a lot going on in, in North Carolina where they made discriminatory laws, and it's the people who are coming out supporting the LGBT community because it's discrimination. And we at the Proud, Proud Black Buddhist World Association do not support discrimination. Now, let me go into the history on the subject of the LGBT community in regards to black people. 
If it was not for the LGBT community, we African Americans would not have progressed to the level that we have reached thus far in America. Now, in regards to religion, it is only the Lotus Sutra and correct teachings of the Buddhism that clearly explains the phenomena of the LGBT community. The Lotus Sutra explains, quote, that the title of the Lotus Sutra is Myo Ho Renge Kyo. Now, Myo Ho Renge Kyo is the title of the Lotus Sutra. Now, in the title of the Lotus Sutra, we get a clear understanding of the LGBT or lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, transgender community. The Lotus Sutra reads, quote, Only Buddhas know the true aspect of all phenomena. The phenomena of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender is only myoho. Myo means open or mystic, and it also means correct. Ho means law, or it means the 3,000 worlds in a momentary state of existence. The law manifests itself based on time and conditions. The time and conditions manifest the law of cause and effect. Now, the Buddha's wisdom teach us that the past, the present, and the future exist in a momentary state of existence. Science estimates that there are 37.2 trillion cells in the human body. Cells are life manifest billions of years of evolution. We humans are continually evolving. The condition of what is known as a man and woman is not static, but it's fluid. The conditions of man and woman is evolving along with what is known as sexuality. What we know as sex or sexuality or gender is evolving. The role of a man and a woman is changing. Who we are today, in a hundred years, we will not be the same. Let me explain. Buddhism in the Lotus Sutra via the 1993 science fiction film called Demolition Man starring Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, and Sandra Bullock. Now, let us look at a scene from the movie where Sandra Bullock, who comes from the future, who they brought Sylvester Stallone from the future to fight this guy who was kind of like a terrorist, Wesley Snipes. When she met Sylvester Stallone, she said she asked him to have sex with her. Now, unbeknown to Sylvester Stallone, he did not understand that people had evolved beyond the point of physical sex and they had what is called virtual sex. So let's look at a scene where in the movie they have virtual sex. Now the reason we bring this up is because the role of sex is changing in the world and as we evolve as humans, the way we know sex is not going to be the sex that we did years ago. Like right now, we got a thing called, what is it, cyber sex. Because inanimate objects are now, now involved in the sex. So things are a whole lot different. So when we get into sexuality or we get off into the LGBT, there is a lot of science and history and cultural changes. Now, through billions of years of evolution, we are wired to have sex. On my website, The Proud Black Buddhist, we did a lecture over a decade ago called Arty or Artipiticalus. This appeared now, Artipiticalus is the oldest anthropological evidence of a human finding 
where they found a human, or at least a human-like creature that was 4.4 million years old called Artie. Now, what they found about Artie, it appeared that the size of a man and a woman had changed, and it was a, it's a uniquely human evolutionary past where the canines were reduced in size and dramatically feminized to a stubby diamond shape, according to researchers. Males and female specimens are close to each other in body size, and a scientist sees changes in part of the impulse change and shift in behavior. Now, what happened was, or what caused the evolutionary change and the human being was sex. See, what happened was a man or a male back in the old days would have to be big and he'd have to fight for sex and he'd have to take sex. Well, what happened among these almost humans, what happened was they evolved. See, what they found out was that if a man or a male wanted sex with a woman, all he had to do was gather food. So the man developed the hands, he developed the ability to walk, and because he wanted to get sex, he didn't have to be the biggest guy no more. He had to become the smartest guy in order to get sex. So the role of sex changed because what happened was we humans evolved in a way to develop hands and become smart with the brain. It was all because of sex. See, we can go into archaeology and anthropology to explain sexuality. See, the Lotus Sutra, uh, or the highest teaching of the Buddha, explains the LGBT and all phenomena. Now, it explains it in the Lotus Sutra, and that explains it in terms of the 3,000 worlds in a momentary state of existence. See, in the 3,000 worlds, there's what is called the 10 aspects. Now, the first one is an appearance, a nature, an entity, a power, an influence, inherent cause, relationship, latent effect, manifest effect, and a consistency from beginning to the end. See, all phenomena has these ten aspects. And within the ten aspects, there are ten worlds. And within the ten worlds, each world is existing to each world. So there's ten times ten times a hundred worlds times ten aspects, which is a thousand worlds times the three realms. And the three realms is an appearance, a perception, conception, volition, and consciousness. Then there's the environment, and then there's the environment of living beings, and there's the environment. So now, the question that Buddhism answers is about the LGBT. Is it an inherent to become this way? Or is it social? See, Buddhism in the Lotus Sutra clearly answers this question. LGB behavior is both inherent and social at the same time. See, Buddhism explains all phenomena in terms of cause and effect. Cause and effect is simultaneous. See, Buddhism teaches us that the past, present, and future exist in a single moment of existence. When a sperm and an egg meet, this is cause and effect relationship manifesting the past, present, and future at the same time. For example, we humans have 23 male chromosomes and 23 female chromosomes. And every life has what is known as a genetic record. Now, that genetic record builds or builds a program that's in terms of who you are. So when you find somebody who is LGBT, they are part of the phenomena of a human being. A human being manifests the 10 aspects. They manifest the 10 aspects, but the 10 aspects encompasses the past, the present, and the future. Now, the Lotus Sutra teaches us that we got 10 worlds. Now these 10 worlds are hell, Hunger, animality, anger, humanity, heaven, learning, self-realization, bodhisattva, and Buddhahood. 
a world can only manifest based on the environment. Now, for example, in the Greek culture, they had a system called the Sparta or Spartans. Now, homosexuality was encouraged to be a morale. Homosexuality was part of the Greek culture. Sexuality is social and a cultural based on a relationship of one's nature and the relationship how it comes in together as we explain the ten aspects. Now let me cite an example. Let's say a physically weak team is sentenced to jail. Men and men in a dominant physical environment manifest their true nature. Whether they are homosexual or not, they develop relationships because human beings are social creatures. And whether one is male or female, whether you are this built this way sexually or physically, you're going to have what is called the dominant and you're going to have a submissive because each person has what is called the ten worlds. That is, we have ten worlds of existence and our nature determines who we are. So we are born with an inherent nature and that inherent nature manifests itself as the life that we live. Now, one's nature is a result of millions of years of evolutionary development. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transition, transgender is a natural, biological, and social evolution for some humans. Various social conditions can cause the process to morph or change identity. Whether it is manifest or latent, this biological process exists within each human being. Now, on June the 26th, 2015, via a 5-4 decision, the United States Supreme Court granted same-sex couples the right to marry. Now, 4.4 million years ago, social conditions caused the evolutions of humans who were able like men did not have a strong, did not have to be strong, they had to be smart to have sex. Nitrin Shonen writes in the Gold Show, and the Gold Show is called On Attaining Buddhahood in This Lifetime. And the Gold Show reads, quote, Life at each moment encompasses the body and mind, the self and the environment of all sentient beings in the ten worlds, as well as insentient beings in the three thousand realms, including plants, sky, earth, and even minute particles of dust. Life at each moment permeates the entire realm of phenomena and is revealed in all phenomena. To be awakened to this principle is itself the mutually inclusive relationship of life at each moment and all phenomena. Now, again, the, the goal show reads, life encompasses both sentient and insentient beings. For example, even now when it comes to sex, sex is not like it was a hundred years ago or even hell, probably 20 or 30 years ago. See, in the movie Demolition Man, the scene showed sex with an insentient being and in that the computer was able to create virtual sex. Now, this happens in our modern technological society because we have an insentient being or what we call a cell phone. You can take your cell phone or you can take your computer and you are not there with a physical being but you can have a sexual relationship based on a computer based on the images. So the insentient life and sentient life all comes together so life is certainly different now than it was a hundred or two hundred years ago. Now. Let us bring the aspect of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender into my personal life. See, when I was 19 years old, I didn't have my first, I didn't have sex until I was 19 years old in 1972. And the girl who I dated, who was the love of my life, 
In fact, I had talked about her because her mother was married to Tina Turner's uh, uncle. Now, my first girlfriend, I understand now that she lives with a woman. Now, she was the epitome of the lesbian, gay, transsexual, bisexual relationship in that I always had suspected that she was this way, but I didn't know. But we had problems in the relationship. She was, I mean, one of the greatest women who I love so much. She was like a, uh, she was like a hippie. She was like a black hippie, man. We used to ride around in my 1964 uh, Chevy Ford van who I, that I painted red, black, and green, like the red, black, and green flag. And we used to hang out, man. We were vegetarians and we were like hippies. And we was all into the black movement together. And I believe that it was her energy that she had from being probably bisexual or transsexual or whatever she was. Now, today, I understand she lives with a woman and I will fight for her right to be who she is or anybody who are uh, to be who they are. Because we at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, we understand that human beings are evolving. In order to evolve and become the best human beings that we can do, we take on the teachings of the Buddha Shakyamuni as taught by Nichiren Shonen or we practice the Lotus Sutra. It is the Lotus Sutra that teaches us how to evolve and become better human beings. Now, when you look at black culture, if it were not for the LGBT we would not have regressed to where we are in society today. Now, we do have a model that we at the Proud Black Buddhists can look to. See, we do not look to some Japanese as our teachers, but we can look to Dr. Martin Luther King. See, Dr. Martin Luther King, and most people don't know this, but behind Dr. Martin Luther King, there was a gay man by the name of Bayard Rustin. Rustin became a leading strategist of the civil rights movement from 1955 to 1968. He was the chief organizer of the 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, which was headed by A. Philip Randolph. Now, the leading African American Union president and socialist. Rustin also influenced young activists like Stoker Carmichael and organizations like Congress of Racial Equality and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. It was Bayard Rustin who put Dr. Martin Luther King out front. He was the chief organizer of the movement and fought President Reagan issued a statement at Rustin's death in 1987 praising his work for civil rights and his shift toward neoconservative politics over the years. Now, on November the 20th, 2013, President Obama posthumously awarded Rustin the Medal of Freedom. See, President Obama knew about this man and he fought for gay rights years ago. Now, when you look at what is known as black culture and history, we are would not have been the people we are if had not been for African Americans who were lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transsexual. When you go back to blues singers like Ma Rainey, or you go back to Josephine Baker who was a, became a citizen of Harris. And when you look at the Hall of Renaissance for writers like James Baldwin or Langston Hughes, or when we look at Lorraine Hansberry who wrote the play Raisin in the Sun, when we go back into the black movement and you see the Afro-wearing 
Angela Davis, who was gay. Or we come on up to Alice Walker, who wrote the movie Color Purple. We can go back in history and find many people who we love and respect were gay. There is hardly very few African Americans who don't love the music of Luther Vandross, but Luther Vandross was gay, so was Michael Jackson, so was Prince, they were androgynous, they were involved, so was Little Richard, and the list goes on and on and on. In fact, let me tell you a little personal story. In 1984, a movie that came out that made me so proud, the movie was called A Soldier's Story. Now, in the movie The Soldier Story, the star of the movie was Howard Rollins. And at the time, in 1984-85, I was with the Adolph Coors Company. I was a world kickboxing champion, and I was a celebrity. It was me and Jeffrey Osborne and Grammy Award nominee, Joyce Kennedy, and a lot of us, we were a celebrity team in Atlanta at the Bill Pickett Rodeo in Atlanta. And of course, one of the other celebrities that was there was Howard Rollins, the late Howard Rollins, who had played the uh, lead role in the movie Soldier Story. After the, we left the Red Rodeo, you know, I had a rental car, and so we jumped in my rental car, and there was me and Howard Rollins in the car together. And I felt so honored to be in the same car with Howard Rollins, and we were just going around Atlanta, we was hanging out, and we were talking together. But one of the things that was so great about being with myself and Howard Rollins, Howard Rollins understood his lane. He was in his lane and I was in my lane. And that while we were together as human beings, as black people, as celebrities, we understood our roles in life. He was in his lane and I was in my lane. Now, what does the Buddhist religion teach us? In the road of life, we have billions of people on the inner state of life. We can all live together, travel together, and we should train ourselves not to have road rage. In regards to the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, we are all on the road together, and there should be no discrimination. And through the road of life, we all have a lane that is for us, we can get together, we don't have to kill the next person. There should not be such a thing as arresting someone or discriminating against someone like driving while black. But in the road to life, there is a way. In the Buddhist world or in the Lotus Sutra, it gives us the road to freedom, justice, and equality. The road to enlightenment is living the correct life. We chant Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. Nam means to become aware or to be awakened. Myo means correct or to open. Ho means the way the law manifests itself. And Ren means lotus flower, and Gay is functions, and Kyo is teachings. Through chanting, Nambu Myoho Renge Kyo, we tap the highest universal consciousness and wisdom. And we learn to have freedom, justice, and equality for all humanity. I am. Anthony M. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, bringing to you the Proud Black Buddhist Association with the LGBT community of freedom, justice, and equality, and 
no discrimination for them. Thank you very much. We are not for the loser, not for the good, not for the false on YouTube, not for the good, you're in my group.